Um, hello, everybody, and welcome to the next session of the Probabilistic Machine Learning Reading Group. This week, we're going to be doing Chapter 11 on linear regression, <clears throat> and we'll be doing Chapter 10 on logistic regression next week. That was the presenter's preference. Um, so I guess we may as well get started. Um, uh, Anthony, if you want to go share your screen. Yeah, sure. So, hi everybody. My name is Antoreep Chana, and today I'll be discussing linear regression and logistic regression. I won't be able to discuss logistic regression as linear regression would be taking up the most of the time. And this 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 particular concept, linear regression, has been there for more than two hundred years, and still still we do discuss topics like these. Uh, reason being simple, statistical, and lightweight and production ready plus pretty pretty reliable pretty reliable so i was planning that the uh the, the session should happen in the we will discuss the theoretical parts then we'll do problem solving which is the second part should have been ideally code oriented but i think that would be just rushing the session as to make that happen it would take two hours three hours so what we can do is we'll discuss regression in depth today. We'll discussion we'll discuss about what regression is, the theory, and the important parts. So what all important parts are there from industry point of view, from industry even for the interviews and for your practical application, all those things which are actually needed in the industry. Um, I mean, if you are doing a project, all those things, as well as if you're appearing for an interview or a discussion, let's say you're discussing with somebody. So what are all things you need to know about regression, all those kind of, all those things. So we'll be discussing about theory. We'll get the theory done today. And in the next session, which is next week on 17th of January, we'll be discussing logistic regression. Logistic regression won't take much time. So logistic regression would not take much time. It would happen very fast. And so we, we can do hands on live coding in that session. I think, I think that would be pretty fun. For that, all you need to require is just listen what I have to talk about linear regression. Linear regression is pretty vast. If you have to study linear regression, there's no end, end to it. I mean, there's literally no end to linear regression if you have to study in depth. But let's try to wrap it up in the next 40, 50 minutes to the extent we can. So, these are all the types of regression analysis. We have simple, multinomial, polynomial, logistic, rich, lasso, Bayesian, decision tree, RF. Then we have modern day, uh, which are pretty much used in Kaggles and those kind of things. XGB regressor, random forest regressor. But I'll be discussing today these two. Majorly this, this one. Now regression models are usually multiple types of regression model. One is simple X to Y mapping. That is the simple one variable. Now this X to Y mapping can be simple X to Y or can be Y equal to X to the power N. So it might be uh, Y equal to X square curve, something like this. Might be Y equal to X cube, something like those. So if it is a simple line, let's say these are the points. This is a simple plot, this is a simple plot. But if the points are something like, if the points are something like, in the, in the form of y equal to x square, then you have to find such a curve. Now let's say they are on, this x goes to y, can be elaborated into multiple x, x1, x2, x3, then that is a case of multiple regression. Even in multiple regression, it can be a case of x1 multiple x1 plus x2 plus x3 equals to y, or it might be a case of x1 plus x2 square plus x3 cube equal to y. If the powers are one, 
it is a linear case else it is a non linear case but before we jump into regression and all the complexities of regression let's discuss what a straight line is the things this is what a regression curve would look like at the end of the day the task is to find this line <clears throat> or in better words task is to find the m and c part so what is m slope basic mathematics what is intercept c how do you calculate slope let's say two points you have two points find a you know how to calculate slope so now now, now the main thing you know how to calculate slope you know how to calculate intercept pretty easy pretty basic what do you might not have taken into consideration is let's say you have obtained a regression line this is a regression line your data is from here till here this is your data training data you have training data for x equal to um let's say 40 and x equal to 100 and uh, this is the corresponding y values these are the corresponding y values now if there is a constraint that x can never be less than can, is always greater than 40 if you try to back uh, back interpolation if you try for x equal to 30 that might not be a valid value in the possible that might not be a valid possible value so x equal to 30 might not be a value in the domain even if x equal to 30 might be there it might end up giving some value or uh, sometimes what happens is this this slope is above let's say you have a line something like this what happen what happens over here let's say hours put hours put and marks obtained so if, even if you have uh, put 0 hours uh, let's say hours put is 1 and marks obtained is negative so this is this is ridiculous this is ridiculous right so let's say your training data was from here i was put this 5 every student has invested at least 5 hours for a examination i was put for an examination for all the students the data we have the minimum hours which has been put by any particular person was 5 and the maximum was let's say 16 for any particular random examination now you have done the regression you obtain this as the line regression line now regression line is this from here to here now you can back interpolate it now if you back interpolate it you reach this point you reach this point so for a person who has invested 4 hours he would score zero he or she would score zero and for a person who has invested 1 hour the results are negative does that make any sense no so please be wary of these this usually happens in lot in the industry so please take into consideration now what is linear regression two things which are pretty much there method of finding the best straight line for a given data this is already something you know right this is something you know basically you have a bunch of points you need to find a best suiting straight line so is it is this line a better fit or this line a better fit or this line a better fit depends on the minimum residual sum of squares what is it this is your regression line this is your regression line and these are your points the line which has the minimal distance from these points minimum normal distance from these points sum of those distances is minimum residual square so we are looking forward to find which a line which is not near to any specific point but is approximately nearest to all the points makes sense pretty much makes sense right so we don't want a line which is something like this it is is equal very very far even this 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 line so far we don't want this how do i undo this <clears throat> yeah we don't want this so what we are looking for we are looking for a line which is pretty much very near to every point now 
what is OLS? Two things which people very much confuse are residual sum of square RSS and OLS. OLS is the method or methodology to find the linear regression model. RSS is used to evaluate and finalize the proximity. So that's the topic of this is the topic of the next slide. What is OLS? Ordinary d squares is something which is used to obtain the curve. RSS is something which is used to evaluate, calculate the accuracy of training parameter. So for OLS, something is like this. How do you estimate any point? Y equal to, you have the line, Y equal to uh, alpha plus beta X. Look over here. Y equals to alpha plus beta, Y equals to alpha plus beta X. Now let's equate it to zero. What would it be? Y for every point, it would be Y I minus alpha minus beta X. Sum it up and find the minimum such sum. Such a minimum sum would help you get the alpha parameter and the beta parameter. Not directly. What would happen is we're going to take a take the differentiation or those, those kind of things will differentiate and we will partial differentiate this equation. This is the equation, concerned equation. The value of y at the point minus the hypothesis points, the parameters we are trying to find. Alpha is the intercept, beta is the slope. So for a corresponding y value and the corresponding x value, we have two parameters, which might be the regression line. The beta might be the slope, alpha might be the intercept. This is the sum of squares, sum of residual squares, or this is the cost function. Anywhere, anywhere, anywhere and everywhere, you just find the cost function and you're, you have understood the machine learning algorithms. To understand any machine learning algorithm, just find the cost function, partial differentiate with the parameters, and you're done. Trust me, you're done with every, every, every machine learning algorithm. What is the equation? Y equal to alpha plus beta x. Now we are trying to minimize this. What would be for every point? Y minus minus alpha minus beta x. Sum square, sum of sum summation and square would be sum of square residuals. This is the equation. Partial derivative with beta cap, partial derivative with alpha cap equate to zero. Solve it for beta cap. This is what the direct formula of uh, sums up or ends up to. This is something you must have seen very, very, very often. So this is something which you must have seen very, very often. The standard formula for beta cap or the slope parameter. For those you have learned or memorized the mugged up beta cap, this is how it obtains. I've not personally performed this, but I know how it is, how, how to reach this. I did it back in when I was in just starting my machine learning journey back in 2018. I did this step by step, but it's been pretty out of touch. But this is how it happens. And if you understand this, this more or less pretty much you understand everything. So you, once you do beta cap, you will be able to find alpha cap. This, so what people don't know about is people know that this form, people usually know about this formula, how to find the slope of any linear regression model given X and Y. Mind, please mind, we are talking about simple linear regression. We are not talking about non-linear or not two variable. We are talking about simple linear. One variable, linear regression. The formula is valid for one variable linear equation. This particular formula where you have a simple X, simple Y, uh, let's say age and height. So value one, output one, those kind of tables. This is the formula. So there are two possible methods of finding the parameters in linear regression. One is this statistical method and another is gradient descent. So we just discussed the statistical method. Now we're going to discuss about gradient descent. Is there anything you have not understood at till there, till here? Please let me know. How do I check the chat section?
hi is there anything uh, how to check it all right so i am assuming everyone is understanding everything the next part is gradient descent so those of you who have this picture in mind of gradient descent please remove this i have explained it on my youtube channel what gradient descent is but if you still want to listen please listen this this is this u shaped thing is not the curve this is just a visualization point is you can see the you can never know the curve you just given a bunch of lakhs and lakhs of x and y points how do you know that this is the curve this is simply what is it it is y equal to x square is it y is every time the curve y equal to x square no this is just for visualization just for visualization you have this point kind of curve but what the essence is essence is you have random points let's say you are traveling in a mountain this is a mountain you are at the top of the mountain now you want to reach back to your home city how would you do you are just an explorer you would go around 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 if you find yourself moving higher you will go down and you will keep on proceeding to the points which lead you to the bottom most point sometimes you might reach to these kind of points you might want to travel a little bit left little bit right little bit up little bit down and figure out if there is a much more lower point or not the lower you go the stable you get yes there is a lower point and you go proceed and proceed and proceed and find the global minima usually we end up at local optima but what are these these are just a visualization thing actually this is what happens you never know what the curve is so this is the curve this is the entire mapping you just have points what you have machine does not know what curve is you don't know what curve is so how do we obtain such such u uh, u shaped thing right how do we obtain these are just fancy uh, descriptions so many people i have seen many people in the industry don't even understand uh, gradient descent properly and this not the fault Plus, but but if you are fortunate enough to have a discussion on this please listen it up carefully so you have multiple points yeah uh, so we, you just made a model model made prediction for any particular x and y for any particular x the prediction is compared to how near it is to the y value the more near to it the less the cost function is and it proceeds downward 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 till the point it reaches the minima there's a point of it's the plot of cost function for the points w cost function for the points w and for the uh, let's say you are here it calculated the cost it shifted over here now again it calculated the cost it shifted it's more more like this more like this it's a better 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 visualization compared to that so you have a gradient thing and the gradient is kind of friction or the gravity pull which is pulling you up so you have a ball which you have a rolling stone you you keep you just leave the ball off in a bowl ball would start rolling down rolling down rolling down rolling down rolling down till it reaches and stabilizes at the minima point once it reaches the minima point it is possible it might overshoot for a while then it will come back and that is usually the intention intuition of gradient descent the gradient descent method or any method uh, there is there is one thing which is cost function what exactly everything revolves around cost function the mathematics of machine learning is cost function so what is cost function here cost function is always the prediction minus what it should have been in logistic regression it is bit difficult and is usually the favorite question of interviews to ask the cost function of logistic regression but here it is pretty simple here is just the points output of x comma y at a point minus what it should have been y 
i what it should have been how do i raise this what it should have been the square of it and the cost of training is 1 by m this average out of m points for the cost function and if you repeat and keep on iterating this for every theta value minus the learning rate into the error then you get you update the theta values theta is the ultimate prediction model the prediction parameters so the prediction parameters would be updated this is also in neural networks in neural networks you have weights equal to weights minus learning rate into the gradient uh yeah so basically you have how do you update a value update the value by getting the value of that origin minus the learning rate into the error or the error value and you keep on doing it doing it doing it doing it till you reach a satisfactory point or basically till you reach the convergence that's what we say so there is usually a n number of iterations till you want to do for all the training examples one equal to n for j equal to 0 to n or modern day examples we have early stopping those kind of things but usually run through all the examples hope this is clear gradient descent so things you need to have in mind if you are asked to find regression line you would not be using by hand if you are asked to find regression line by hand you won't be using the gradient descent method you will be using the statistical method or if you are using sk learn dot linear model dot linear regression then you are using the statistical method or the ols method however if you are using sgd regressor what happens behind sgd regressor sk learn dot linear model dot sgd regressor then in that case you are using gradient descent algorithm what happens in gradient descent algorithm is pretty much a bunch of random points out there you are not using statistics we are using human basis understanding where you are just iterating through the points take one point calculate the cost function and update the parameters based on the learning rate and the difference based on the learning rate and the difference learning rate and the diff sum of differences now what we do is discuss about small learning rate large learning rate this usually too too large learning rate is hazardous as the values will jump off too small learning rate might end up will with very baby steps and take a long time so ideally you should have a good learning rate how to find good learning rate it comes up with experience and uh, usually the uh, standard values of regression models or anything are good learning rates but yes it comes with experience so these are few assumptions which are usually asked in co examinations but good to know good to know so basically we are assuming that linear linearity assumption not any multi collinearity assumption we are assuming that assumptions about are independent of each other measured without error zero mean normal these these are pretty much um, not worth discussing just understand this how the variables are this might take some time uh, let's let's hurry up a bit how much time do we have so we are half way done let's so this is something you should understand better when to apply linear regression so first you should do a scatter plot of the independent variables and the target variables if the plot looks linear if this is the plot definitely a linear line goes through it if plot looks like this or input i plot then we can do some transformation like y equal to uh, square root or square something like those something like those and get a linear line plots are easy to obtain in case of single variable and multi variable what you need to do if you have multiple variables what do you need to do pairwise plot there's a function in sns c1 library sns dot pair plot
so that plots every variable with the another variable so what you need to do is to plot a pair plot get the plots done pretty, pretty into uh, intuitive you can see right you can see these are the points if these are the points how would you make a line simple just make a line like this so pretty pretty intuitive apart from it if you are asked to predict house prices the best way to proceed and start any question is with house prices is linear regression if you are asked to predict the sales how would you do predict the sales based on the historic data how would you do regression if you are asked to do not linear regression any kind of regression but that is a regression problem if you are asked let's say you are given the height length width and um, those those kind of things so how how much would it weigh is it this is kind of regression this is also regression so these these are entities where you need to predict a particular number based on other parameters so we are looking forward we have covered a lot and by the end of the session you should be knowing these many things we i might not have mentioned a lot many in the video in the session but these are the things i expect you to be comfortable with by the end of the session what are explanatory variables anyone explanatory variables are you guys listening all right so explanatory variables are the ones which are independent variables so x values the x x1 x2 x3 so let's say let's say hours put and the marks obtained hours put would be explanatory and response is the marks obtained same goes uh, same does not go for intercept slope intercept is intercept slope is slope you already know then by the end of the session you should know what processing a categorical variable and a continuous variable should look like continuous variable you would be mostly dealing with standardization normalization so do you see there is a lot of part in the data processing as well uh so there's a lot of part in the data processing as well then forming a regression line regression to the mean this is a important interesting concept common data transformations pretty much interesting quantifying a model visualizing model visualization and this part we'll do in the next session i think it will be too much i mean information overflow so let's see how much we are able to cover linear versus non linear we have already discussed this is simple linear x versus y this is multi linear weight horse power mpg and this is the point this, this is a bit planar planar kind of but this is also a linear plot multiple linear regression now this is a non linear this is following this is not a x power 1 this is x power 1 by 2 or something like those all right so we have discussed this let's say this is the data set age and glucose level so how would you calculate the slope of this line this is the formula we discussed back there we discussed here slope of the formula y minus y cap x minus x cap x minus x whole square this thing and this thing just put in the values get the regression line now once you have i would do the calculation but this is the method standard method of calculation if you are in colleges this might be asked if you are giving a statistics exam this is a pretty standard question x versus y this is the data set so what do you do do multiplication of xy obtain xy column obtain x square and obtain y square 
once you do that just put in the values and get the regression line now you have this regression line what does this mean for someone who has age 0 which i was talking about for someone who has age 0 has a glucose level of 65.4 does that make any sense no so uh, what is the minimum value we have 21 around So yeah, difference between explanatory and response variables is this is the explanatory and this is the explanatory, this is the response. What is the response for age equal to 21? We have response as 65 glucose level for age equal to 247. Oh, sorry, for age equal to 59, we have response variable as 81. Explanatory is also known as independent variables, X values. Just simply remember, explanatory x is x values, multiple x values. Response is output. For response, you remember output and output is y values. Now, we have the regression values. Regression line is this and this. So this is the slope. This is the 65.4. Usually, how to read a regression line for every of uh, for every one unit increase in age, the glucose level increases by 0 0.385. For every one unit in age, for every one unit increase in age, the glucose value increases by 0 0.385. That's it. Now, limitation and production use cases. Usually, regression is pretty sensitive to outliers and that has been tackled by XGB regressor and random forest regressors. And mean of the dependent variable, we will talk about this pretty interesting topic. Or well, let's talk about it. So let's say this is my regression line. So do you expect all the training data to be points which, what could have been the training data points? What would have been the training data points? Ideally, training data points should have been all the points on this regression line, right? But no, that's not the case. Usually, that's not the case. What happens? What usually happens is this is one point, 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 this is one point. So for extreme values, for values which are lying way above, so let's say somebody performed very well last year, but regression would average it out. So it averages out. This is what regression to the mean is. So even let's say in 2017, a sports person scored 300 points, which is way high, but due to regression, and due to regression line, if asked to predict for 2018, we would say how much lower value somewhere like 200. Oh, what happened? Where was I? Yes. So usually mean of the dependent variable is, uh, let's say, uh, I lost all the drawings. This is the curve. This is the regression line. Now, this regression line must be having points. All the points would have been somewhere like this, somewhere like this, around, around it in the vicinity of it. So what we ideally obtain for a point which is way above, let's say a point somewhere like this, when asked for an X value like this, it would not predict this value, but it would predict this value. Same goes for this. It would not predict lower value, it would predict an average value. So what does it do? It averages out, has an averaging effect. 
So that is what we call as mean of the dependent variable. We perform a mean or kind of averaging effect. Where values, variables must be independent. Yeah, absolutely. So we are assuming that all the variables are independent. So we have age, weight, height as a parameter. But what about parameters like body mass index, which is dependent, which is not independent. Body mass index can be obtained using the weight and height. So those are variables which cause trouble. Those are not independent variables. If you have age, weight, height, it is fine. But if you have a body mass index, then you should either remove body mass index or you should remove age and uh, you should remove weight and height and keep body mass index. So those are the things which are usually troublesome and are limitations of linear regression. Where do you use linear regression? Is used to assess financial risk marketing effectiveness, pricing promotions, future sales, and investment return amount. Those are pretty much use cases. So usually the financial sector is all about linear regression. So I was just talking about multicollinearity or just talked about BMI versus the weight and the height. So how to deal with multicollinearity, right? Multi, what do you understand by multicollinearity? X1 plus X2 plus X3 equals Y. This is normal. But what if X2 equals M times X3? This is multicollinearity. So this is Y equal to X3. And X2 can be some slope of it. So pretty much X2 can be expressed in terms of X3, this is multicollinearity. These are not independent and linear regression hates these kind of things. How do you find, find a correlation matrix? Just plot a correlation matrix, find X2 and X3, get a correlation matrix and you will be good to go or calculate the variance, variance inflation factor. Try it out, search about it. I won't be discussing out of the scope of this particular discussion but pretty, pretty this pretty much solves it if not this is a feature selection method this also solves it so once you have done the correlation matrix how does a correlation matrix look like we would like to see let's see correlation matrix so you can see a variable and a variable always have high correlation with itself, a very uh, age versus age would always be one. Obviously all the values in age column versus all the values in age column should be one. We are looking for high covariance. High covariance should be very red. This particular does not have. Now you can see displacement versus horsepower has a very high correlation factor. So is the weight with displacement. So these points can be removed. These variables can be removed. This is what we want to talk about variable selection or what we can do is transform these variables into something else so that the correlation is reduced. Pearson correlation is reduced or what we can do take all the variables and do a principal component analysis. What does principal component analysis do? Principal component analysis takes 100 variables and plots takes out, this is a different topic, it's pretty much different topic, but a very, very superficial overview, takes all the data points and takes it into another dimension, wherein one axis consists of, tries every axis tries to capture the maximum variance and every axis is perpendicular to each other. Principal component analysis, the best method to reduce. Where do you use principal component analysis? Just out of context, where do you use principal component analysis? Anywhere you can find 
hundreds and hundreds of features. So if you have more than 50 features, go for principal component analysis from industry experience. Go for principal component analysis. If you have, let's say, this multi-collinearity, go for principal component analysis. So those are the things which comes with experience. How do you handle outliers? Why do outliers are such a big concern? So let's say if had this point not been there, you would have plotted somewhere like this. But now this takes up a huge value and does matter a lot. So rather than this, what would you do? You would plot something like something like this to take into consideration just because of one such point. So is it is it even a reliable point? And due to the single point, we do not want or we don't wish to get messed up with all the other points. So what we do, we plot a box plot, we can plot a scatter plot, we can do a Z school method. After plotting, plotting a box plot, we find that any value which is greater than quantile 3 plus 1.5 IQR can be removed. So is any value which is lesser than quantile 1 and less than 1.5 IQR can be removed. This is the box method. In the scatter plot method, this is more of a numerical or statistical method. Just formula, calculate quantile 3, calculate quantile 1, calculate IQR based on Q3 minus Q1 and just put in the values. Any value greater than or lesser than this particular range, this range is an outlier. This is statistical, pure statistical method. Now, what is scatter plot? Let's say you don't want to go over statistical method. You want a more reliable method. You plan, you just plot out all the points. Now, what you decide is any value for x greater than 100. For x greater than 100, remove the values. Don't keep the values. For x greater than 100, don't keep the values. These are removed. So these, these points will be taken into the consideration. What is Z-score method? Similar to box IQR, we have Z-score method. Anything which is within two standard deviations from the center will be taken into consideration or three standard deviations. Anything beyond three standard deviations is an outlier. Just touching up the theory, try to listen it up very carefully. I'll cover it up in the code section, which will start making sense once I do the coding part and refer back to the theory, which will happen the next week. So what are the tech available for getting your regression done? We have classic scikit-learn library. We have stats models. Now scikit-learn library should be used for quick model fitting, prediction, pipelining, usually a production grade software. What is stats model? In-depth analysis of variables, pretty much in-depth. This should First, you should get it comfortable with this. Once you get comfortable with this, learn the theory for linear regression. Once you learn the theory for linear regression, yes. Uh, anybody wants to say something? All right, I'll carry forward. So once you learn the theory for linear regression, go to stats models. How does it help? In-depth analysis of variables, suitable for feature selection, exploratory data analysis. And if you want to get a better understanding of what the model is, how to do the feature selections, which variables should be added, which variables should not be added, why did you keep that particular variable? So this is in-depth mathematical analysis. This is a bit more automated and those guys who don't understand the mathematics behind linear regression. These are the various parameters for regression, uh, fit, intercept, normalized, X copy. These are the bit parameters. So pretty much this is what the Escalon describes, ordinary least squares linear regression. And fits a line with coefficients to minimize the residual sum of squares, which is the, I think you now know the difference between this word and this word. This word is the method to find a linear regression line. Y minus alpha minus beta X is the cost function, square it up, mean one by n, derivative with respect to alpha, with respect to beta, find the value of beta, ordinary least squares. Alpha beta obtained, calculate the minimum, calculate the values, how to validate that alpha beta are correct via residual sum of squares. Evaluating regression model, 
so how do you evaluate a regression model so it's very important after training you have a good validation act you have a good evaluation strategy so that you can ensure you can be you can cross verify that your model is is reliable and can be considered for production what people usually do wrong is data leakage what is data leakage data leakage is something like let's say you have data part of it is testing part of it you do as training is this correct no what should be done what hello 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 yeah so what should be done is take the test part aside whatever your test data is keep it aside don't mix it up now this is your train data within train data have different parts every time as a validation sometimes take this part as validation sometimes take this part as validation sometimes take this part as validation what do we call this as k for cross validation now it is very important that your test data set is a good representation of your training and validation data set else that would lead to very bad results what is data leakage data leakage is you are you have training data you trained a model and you are trying to validate and trying to optimize the model based on the prediction of the test data but test data is something which is supposed to be unseen so what should be done train data take the train data and within the train data take parts as validation data rather than taking test data as validation data test data should be test data should be predicted if you are performing any experiment the best way to understand data leakage is if you are performing any experiment if you deal with test data more than once drop that experiment and start again in other words test data should be the last line model dot predict test data and that's it get the predictions submit it to somebody and forget about this data that should be that should how you should that says how you should deal with test data so if i am very clear with test data what should be test data something you deal with only once model dot predict test data that's it and get the predictions submit it to somebody don't ever never ever look back at test data now you have a data which is called as trained data within the trained data sometimes you might be provided with validation data but let's say you are not provided with validation data two scenarios you have one test.csv you have train.csv or you might have train.csv and validation.csv keep test.csv separate you have train.csv validation.csv combine them up shuffle them up and make tenfold cross validation what is tenfold cross validation take the entire data set split it in 10 parts you already know take one part as validation and other nine parts as training but let's say you don't have um, the validation part so none, nothing to worry about take the train part and do tenfold cross validation now what to do if your test performance is bad but your training and validation performance is good if your test performance is bad then that means either your training data is not a good representative of test data or someone who has prepared the test data is extremely different from what the training data is and those are different thing there's a lot always a lot to discuss popular metrics msc rmsc ma coefficient of determination are adjusted coefficient of determination there is no fixed metric to experiment with you can linger around and study a bit how much is left 1 2 3 4 5 five more slides how much time do we have so we might have to extend it by 10 minutes but let it be so what is mean squared error take all the errors what is error what is et what is et et is value y prediction what is y prediction 
a plus b into x i so you input the value of x you already have calculated the slope and the intercept if you have calculated the slope and the intercept you input a variable let's say 10 you get the prediction as 20. so what is et prediction should have been 21 you would say et is y minus y cap this is et understandable no et is this is et for a point for a one point i or t equal to one absolutely sum of all those error terms square of those average them out mean squared error take the error terms square them up and average them out mean square error smaller the mean square error the closer we are to the best fit line understandable absolutely what is the problem what is the problem mean squared error is something like what would be the unit of mean squared error it would be let's say we are trying to predict the height of a person based on his age there uh, we have data of 100 men and based on the data of 100 men the age of 100 men we are trying to predict the height so what what would it be based on the age and the weight age and the weight we are trying to predict height what would it be uh, the error term error term would always be in height the square of error term would be height square or meter square so the mean square error is usually a bit difficult to comprehend at its squares of the values so to have a value or an error term which is in the same units as that of the target variable that is meters or height in this particular instance we have root mean square error, the square root of the mean square error value. Usually the value obtained is the same as that of the target column and considered. Either people sometimes use this, sometimes use this. Kaggle's favorite is this or this. Then both are sensitive to outliers. So if there's an outlier, the error value would be very high. Square of that error value would be very, very high. And that is why. These are a bit sensitive to outliers. This is a very uh, frequently asked question, sensitive to outliers. Now we have mean absolute error. What is mean absolute error? Don't square it up, just keep on adding. If it is a negative error, let's say the value should have been 20, but you predicted 22, then it is a positive error. But value should have been 20, but you predicted 18, then it is a negative error. So what do we do? Just don't go into positive negative. Just take the absolute value. In both cases, it would be 22 minus 20, that is 2. And 22, 18 minus 20, modulus, that is also 2. And sum them up, average them out. We have mean absolute error. Not sensitive to outliers. Usually asked. Three more slides and let's wrap it up. How to quantify a model fit? R square value, pretty much asked, very often asked, how do you quantify a linear regression model? Coefficient of determination, R square value. This is the formula. This is also formula. These, this is the formula for those who are good with statistics. If you're not, ignore this. This is the standard method and formula for finding coefficient of determination. Coefficient of determination is also known as square of the coefficient of correlation. Now, what is coefficient of determination? Let's say the coefficient of determination between the age variable and the uh, target variable was 81%. This means age variable was able to explain 81% of the variance of the target variable. That is how we try to explain coefficient of determination. Then we have res residual standard error. Higher the residual standard error, the bad the model is so there means a model could have been something like this with much lesser residual sum of errors something like this where we have very less residual sum of error residual standard error something like whatever then this is another plot which is performed to identify how good a model fit is if the residuals versus the fitted values if something a plot something like this is obtained 
then it is good. A plot where all the points are in triangular region, this is not good. If point points are this like this in the inverted U, then therefore we can conclude that there is no linear relationship. Rather, there exists there is a possibility of a second degree or fourth degree relationship or non-linear regression. What does OLS look like? OLS is something which SKLearn does not show you. OLS is pretty much terrifying for someone who's just started, but it's pretty detailed. You see dependent variable Y and R squared value, you get the R squared value, you get the adjusted R squared value, you get F statistic, you get log likelihood. You also get uh, coefficients for the constant. Constant is the intercept value minus 3.2. X1 is the first variable slope is 0 0.75. What is this PT? PT is used to signify whether to take this variable or not to take this variable. If this value ex exceeds from 0 0.05, you would reject a variable. So let's say there was an, another variable X2 with value like 0 0.0 uh, uh, 0 0.1. So we'll reject this. You, uh, I mean, this would be rejected and that is why it is accepted. Don't get into that, that thing. You would get confused, but uh, that is pure statistics. That's pure statistics. I, I'll share a course for that, but that is how. So this is rejected. This is rejected. That is why this is taken into consideration. This is not rejected. That's why it is not taken into consideration. Skew metric, kurtosis metrics, a lot of information out there. And this is what OLS model does. But I'll share in the next session, I'll sh do lives on coding with you about for what linear regression is and how to do scikit-learn as well as how to do uh, OLS modeling, stats models. Most probably I'll do upload the code on GitHub and share the URL with Mr. Perry. And Mr. Perry will share the GitHub repo with you two days or three days prior so that you have time and explore the code. And it will be much faster for me to go through the code once you have explored it. Next session, we'll discuss a bit more about, we'll discuss, we'll start with logistic regression. And then we'll, if time permits, we'll get back to some things, few things which I left in linear regression and definitely the code part. All right. Hope you enjoyed the session. Apps right on time. Great. Any well, thank questions? You. Thank you very much, uh, Antari. Um, Does anybody have any questions? Yeah, I see somebody's question. Is the cost function different in OLS and SGD? Uh, cost function is not ideally not different in OLS. We take the sum of squared errors, and in SGD, we take just the difference of errors. Slight difference, but fundamentally the same. Fundamentally the same. Fundamentally, every cost function is same. It usually simplifies into something or the other. What you should be, would be asked is loss function. What the loss function is, that is usually asked in the questions. Cost function is always your H theta. Your cost function is always H theta minus Y value or the actual values. So H theta, what is H theta? H theta is the model, the values which the model predicts minus what it should have been. So I think uh, pretty much every, 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 not, not even regression, everything has the same fundamental functioning for cost function. If you are asked about loss function, that is a different thing. Oh yeah, sorry. Loss function for logistic regression is a different thing. Right. Okay, does anybody else have any questions? Yeah, the video will be posted in the deep learning group. Um, and if you look at the announcements, um, the, um, there's a link to, the, to a YouTube channel that has all the videos um, from all the sessions we've done so far. How popular is linear regression in industry? Pretty popular. I mean, pretty popular. There are those, I mean, the ones who deal with linear regression, there are a few people who deal with linear regression on internet. 
those are the ones who never show linear regression and they feel ashamed of linear regression because we have modern day architectures like sgb regressor sgb regressor random forest regressor but those are there are guys who are into mathematics purely into mathematics so if you are into mathematics linear regression pretty much yeah. linear regression yeah it can also be useful as a, as a baseline to see how your other algorithms are doing yeah and i think uh, i mean other algorithms like random forest pretty heavy so is the case with xgb boost so i have talked to few people they have implemented linear regression in their industry solutions as well so pretty popular at least for baselines it is 100% popular as well as it might also go into production i mean beauty of linear regression lies in the detail it hides so how i started with regression is y equal to mx plus c now y equal to mx plus c has so many things the x value can be extended to x1 plus x2 plus x3 now which value of x1 to take x1 to take x2 to take x3 to take how do you decide based on the p values how the p values are calculated through the stats model sklearn won't do that for you sklearn would take all the models all the variables so pretty vast pretty vast okay anybody else have any questions no no okay well thank you very much uh, and trip for your presentation tonight and i guess we'll see you back here next week for yeah logistic, sure yeah for logistic regression um, okay, I guess we're going to wrap it up. So thank you everybody for, for attending and um, we'll see you back here next week. Yeah, right? sure. Have a good night thank or you, a good day. Good Bye day. everybody. Bye-bye.